Hey, bud. <laughs> Welcome to a golden evening on the farm. Zucchini, you watching the game? Are you a baseball fan? Okay. Hey guys, I'm going for a little walk. We just had dinner. Maya's obviously playing catch with Ben and the kids are all kind of having their chill time after dinner. And I am gonna walk out and enjoy my farm while it's not a million degrees. Hey turkeys. <laughs> My big ones will talk back to me, but these little youngins don't know anything about crazy, <laughs> crazy turkey ladies. <laughs> Someone asked me the other day, how often do you go out and ruin your appetite with tomatoes? Um, to which I responded, never, because <laughs> is an appetite that has been satiated with tomatoes ever ruined? Or just well satisfied? In all seriousness, I like coming out after dinner when I can eat tomatoes for dessert. I saw this thing on the internet today, and I don't know how I got there. Well, yeah, I do. I was Googling um, unusual homemade ice cream flavors and I saw a recipe for basil ice cream which in this particular post was served over cherry tomato cobbler and they had taken equal parts cherries and cherry tomatoes and made a cobbler with it and served it with basil ice cream and in part I want to be like appalled at that in another part, I'm very, very intrigued and I'm totally gonna make that because, I mean like, I, I feel like I have to. <laughs> it's not even a, it's not even, it's just, it's such a, it's such a, a deeply rooted curiosity. I must, I must know. Oh, look here. I've got my butterfly peas on this trellis and I put some of both kinds. Uh, the blue butterfly pea and then I also grew the lavender this year. And these flowers are great uh, dried for tea. It looks like I missed a few of these blooming. I mean, they're growing pretty well. That's gonna end up going all over the place. These things are slow starters, but once they get going, they go everywhere. I have a few peas here that started to make some seeds and I'm gonna leave these and then harvest the seeds. I don't know which flower that was. I think it was the lavender one but I don't have any more seeds beyond what I may I planted in the seed pack and once I have more seeds I may even do a trellis of these. This parsley is blooming and that means that it's not going to be great for eating anymore but uh, parsley, dill, those are both uh, host plants for swallowtail butterflies. So anytime something like this sprouts in my garden, unless I'm really hurting for space, I just leave it there because it's gonna be beneficial to insects that I would like to have in my garden. Look at this bitter melon. I'm gonna redirect it. It's grown like crazy with the rain we had the last couple of days. Here I've been lamenting all of my empty trellises from things not growing well, but it looks like the bitter melon is going to help amend that problem. I have a feeling this may be one of those things that just does what it wants. Wow, the plant smells like bitter melon. It's got a really strong scent to the leaves. Y'all, I shot my garden tour, what, a few days ago? And at the time, the little cucumbers on this were like this big. No exaggeration, they were <laughs> tiny. And now, a few days later, I am no longer a cucumberless gardener. So normally, where I live in the Midlands of South Carolina, you would start your cucumber seeds in, inside. If you did start your cucumber seeds inside, you would have your plants bearing fruit by like the end of May. Because normally our first frost date is around the beginning of April. But it's been later the last couple of years and I didn't start my seeds ahead of time. I decided to direct sow and dealt with pill bugs eating the plants down 
just every attempt I made. Finally started some inside a month and a half late. And now I'm harvesting my first cucumbers of the year in the middle of July. And so I'm gonna be completely honest, I don't have really high hopes for the flavor of these cucumbers because when it is hot, cucumbers get bitter. But we're gonna try it. This is an experimental like pickling cucumber from row seven seeds. Yep. It's really not the cucumber's fault. It's terrible, but, but it's not the cucumber. It's not the variety's fault. It's not row seven seeds. There are plenty of lovely things. I think they even said on the package of this one, water plenty for less bitterness. Cucumbers taste bad when it's really hot and the plants are not just getting an excessive amount of water. Um, it's nicer when it's cooler because they don't dry out and therefore they don't get bitter. But man, these are terribly bitter. Will brought me a bunch of silver slicers. This one was actually just sitting out here in the, in the pavilion, but he brought me like a whole basket of silver slicers. I'm gonna use those to make some pickles and just play with in the kitchen. He's been bringing me some just to eat, so I've not been without cucumbers in my life just without cucumbers that I grew. The silver slicer variety I have found does not get bitter when a lot of other varieties do. And that's one of the reasons why I like this one so much. Um, I've got some plants over here. Of course, they're not near bearing. They probably won't bear for at least another couple weeks. And even, even with the silver slicers, they do eventually start having issues. So with really bitter cucumbers, you can still make things. If I were going to try to make something out of these, I would probably do some sort of like relish or something that was going to have some some sugar in it and something to offset the bitter taste. They're, they would still be edible in that way. I would definitely peel them and get the skins off to help because the, the middle doesn't get as bitter as the skins and the outside edges do. But since Will literally brought me like a five gallon bucket of my favorite cucumbers today, these are gonna be turkey food. Hey, pretty birds. Would you like a cucumber? It's not my best work, but eat your heart out. There, back up, you're gonna scare the turkey. It looks as if I've tried to pawn off some bitter cucumbers on my turkeys and that they're having none of it, but Bear came up and they were feeling nervous with him hovering, so they'll probably eat those as soon as we walk away. Thank you all so much for your response. I shared um, in, a, in a video earlier this week about how I was thinking about taking this middle section in the garden, which has been like use for sweet potatoes and potatoes largely and instead establishing a more permanent space here that could be fenced in and in the future doing our potatoes across the driveway where we could till you guys were so encouraging it just made me feel awesome <laughs> truly sometimes i will like share an idea i'm having or something i'm working on and you guys are just like amazing cheerleaders and i i feel all warm and fuzzy and i feel i just feel so encouraged when I have a, an idea in this whole uh, group of people who, who just like cheer me on. So thank you for that. I'm feeling really excited and I've been sketching out some ideas of how I want this to go. I feel like by establishing this where it is more permanent and it's not just constantly in flux, like right now this is kind of in between. There's sweet potatoes, there's tarps, this is gonna be tarped. Um, I feel like by doing something more established, we can put our fences up and create more of the feel I'm trying to create. I'm thinking um, of doing berry bushes that do really well here, potentially putting in some like scuppernogs um, and muscadines, which are very popular here in South Carolina, and you can use those to make like muscadine wine. And also you can use them to make jams and jellies and all that, and of course all the berries and all of that. 
we can use a lot of stuff like that and I feel like berries are such a great bang for the buck with your space because buying berries at the store can be so expensive and with freezing and freeze drying and dehydrating while the berries are growing we can put them up and use them all year for lots of different applications so having that that established here I think is going to be really productive I think it's going to really work with what we need and then I think it's also going to give me the opportunity to design something really beautiful here with um, a couple of fruit trees, the berries, some paths, potentially another little focal point in the middle. I don't know. Try to keep it chill. You know, I'm so good at that. Speaking of chill, look at all of the zinnias that I didn't have the heart to take out whenever they grew voluntarily. Some, these are not volunteers. Some of them are, but some of these were planted by me. Literally all the rest of the zinnias and the celosia all volunteered to grow. Wow. Look at that lettuce leaf basil. Beautiful. More volunteer coxcomb. I'm trying to adjust my camera not to compensate because it's, it's getting dark out here. And I just want you to see my view of these lovely sunflowers in the dusky evening. Some little bird has been helping themselves to a treat or a squirrel. Hey, look at that. My chicken and dumplings cow peas are producing. And look at this, this is exactly what I was hoping for here. That these would come over and cover the walkways. This is just really starting to make this leap of growth in the last couple of days uh, that it's been raining and humid. The reason I wanted this space to have so many rambling things with the cow peas as well as the winter squashes was because I knew this in-ground space was gonna have a lot of Bermuda and I was wanting some ground cover. <gasps> I just saw this, look! Got some baby squash! Bear, get out of there, come on. So these are some sunflower, Steve sunflowers that are planted throughout here. And check this out, so like these are multi-headed. They have the one main head, oh. We'll go back to compensating for the light. We have the one main head, and then they have all these side shoots off of them, which this is really cool because you get the best of both worlds. You get the beautiful flower in your garden, but you have these that you can cut for arrangements on the table. And a lot of these are like this. They have the one main and then all the little, I think here, you can see, main bloom. Off, offshoot. Here's this one. I can't get in there because I'm wearing sandals. Um, but look. Isn't that awesome? I'm pretty sure this is the Marley mix of Sunflower Steve Sunflowers, but I'm not I'm not 100% sure. He sent me a couple that he was working on that weren't released yet. And there's still a lot of variety in them because he's still working on them. But man, they're awesome. I just love them. Well done, Steve. <laughs> Oi, that's a mess. It's great. I mean, truly a mess. I wouldn't step in there right now <laughs> for anything. <laughs> not, not without jeans and boots on, but there's going to be a lot of food that comes out of this mess. <laughs> Let's go walk by the pond. It's getting too dark to see much up there, so might as well. I don't think you guys have seen this for a little while. Um, we have the willow up by the front that we planted the, when we first came to visit here. But we planted it before we lived here. We bought the property and we came out to visit it in April. And we, we literally just planted it and then had to leave for two months. And um, I don't, it, you know, I don't know how much it rained, I don't know how much water it got. And that tree has gotten pretty good size, but last summer I planted one. So I planted this one a year later and we were actually here to take care of it. <laughs> and it was, it's right next to the water. And this willow is massive. It's actually bigger than the one that we planted the year before. Isn't that great? So the plan is eventually when we build a house, it's gonna be up here and there will be a porch that runs down this side. We already have the plans drawn and the porch will overlook the pond. And I put this willow beside the pond because I thought it would be really pretty to see off the porch. And underneath it, there's a bunch of day lilies. Of course, they're not blooming right now. There's some irises here too. Don't get in that water. You'll have to lay outside all evening. Bear, don't do it. It's not worth it. And here's Will's Chinampa that he built. He has a video about this, I'm pretty sure. He built it 
Um, oh, I'm going to mess this up. This is, I believe, from Mayan culture. And it is basically built out over the pond so it's essentially like a wicking bed. I know I showed this last year, but Will built it last year and then we didn't really plant a whole lot in it. We planted some things and then bugs got them. It was kind of towards like the end of the summer that he did it. So this year he put like quite a few things in here just to see what would happen. He threw some okra in, some cow peas. It is really, really pretty. Um, and healthy. He put a lot of my pitcher plants in there and can see those. Pretty cool. I love experimenting. And let's look here. Some more little garden spaces beside the pond. Pretty gladiolus. These are kind of coming to an end. They look like they're on fire right now in the super saturated evening light. It's almost dark out here. And I've got irises down here and some cannas. That's papyrus all around the water's edge. I had been planting things and they kept getting choked out by weeds. And Will actually came up with this, this idea of just mounding up a bunch of mulch and essentially digging holes down and planting the plants. And the mulch obviously suppressed the weeds in a big way. Um, but it also kind of helps wick the moisture up and hold it. When we put things around the pond that love moisture, like irises like wet, they like being wet. And of course these pitcher plants are native here, carnivorous plants. I tried planting several of those in pots around the garden um, because carnivorous plants and there are, you know, like in places I wanted to be able to move them where I was having like a lot of beetles or different things, but they did not do well in containers up there. I was watering them as much as I could, but they just weren't taking hold. Um, and down here where this mulch is staying damp, right by the pond, they're really growing quite a bit. The other day I was talking to my friend Daniel and we were talking about overwhelm. I just recorded a podcast talking about overwhelm that's going to be out here in another week or so. If you're not already following our podcast, you can get on our email list and you won't miss one. They come out every Wednesday. I was talking to Daniel about this podcast I'd shot and he said something and it, I thought it was really good and I just thought of it. He said, you could eat the best steak but if it wasn't seasoned, it wouldn't be at its full potential. And he goes, and then if you ate what people considered the best steak every single day and you weren't able to season it at all, eventually you would just get sick of it. And it wouldn't even take that long. And he said, you know, I think one of the ways that you have to deal with overwhelming seasons is making sure that the things that make your life flavorful and the seasoning in your life is not getting left off for the sake of, you know, being busy and time. I thought a lot about that and really realize that I'm, I am really bad about getting busy, especially during the seasons where there's a lot of demand with kids being home from school and the garden and preserving and cooking and wanting to be a fun mom and wanting to be good at creating content and all of the different things that go in. And I can start just juggling, trying to keep the top of my priority list handled and keep the right things on the top of my priority list. And I forget to make that little bit of time for those things that don't really feel like such a massive deal. Like for me spending the last 25 minutes before the sun sets outside, walking through my garden when it's cool and enjoyable and walking down by the pond and stuff like that. This is the seasoning of my beautiful life. Like this is not what makes it good, but it what it's what makes it the best that it can be, you know, when I take the time for these things, when I wake up and take the time to write in my journal and pray, whenever I, you know, take the time, just if it's 15 or 20 minutes to like sit and, and take a break and have a sweet moment with Maya and to really connect with my kids and connect with my garden, connect with my, my farm and not just do the jobs. It's why I always tell you guys, every garden needs a chair because if we don't hem in the space for rest and for seasoning, uh, life can be very bland and we can become very sick of even doing the things that are incredible blessings that we love so here's your little reminder today to not forget the seasoning as I sit here and watch the sunset on my farm from my swing by the pond thank you for hanging out with me today and all the days that you do I bless you until next time